again, we're at the Touching Hearts Ministries Church. So glad that you took time to spend some time with us today. We have an important message today. We're going to talk about backsliding, and a lot of us don't want to talk about that subject, but we've learned to tackle every subject here, and our answer always comes from what the Bible says, and everybody says amen. The title of the sermon we're going to talk about is just strictly backsliding, backsliding. but the good news is the sermon title today is From Defeat to Victory Through Jesus Christ, but before we get into that, I, we always ask that the Holy Spirit comes and guides us and directs us here. And our number one priority is we want to uplift the lovely name of Jesus Christ to let folks know that the creator of all things is intensely in love with you. No matter your lifestyle, Jesus Christ loves you anyway. So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we ask today that the Holy Spirit come and guide us and direct us and enlighten us today as well as encourage us as well. Lord, the subject of backsliding willingly turning our backs upon you after you have saved us lord we're going to talk about that subject today and i know there's someone viewing in maybe in our congregation today who is really struggling maybe being in a backsliding condition we're going to talk about heavenly father how you react to that so i ask lord that you give me the words to speak your words are always kind and loving never scornful just kind and loving and long-suffering be with this service, Father, I pray. In the name of Jesus, send thy spirit. Amen. Anyway, before we even get to the to message today, Robert Dean, let me read this to you, and it will pretty well set up where this sermon is going to today. Let me read this to you. We are all in a boat. A few months ago, Rachel, we did a sermon called Paddling Upstream, that once you get in the boat for Christ, you have to continually work and paddle because you're going against the current. Is everybody with me? So we're going to talk about that today. Listen very carefully. We are all in a boat. We all face adversity. We all face confrontation. It is inevitable. <laughs> but only those that are fighting the good fight of faith, those, now listen to these words, those who are continually moving forward for Jesus, with Jesus, through Jesus, in Jesus, will be victorious in finishing the race that leads to eternal life. We talked about a sermon not too long ago, paddling upstream. We come to find out that there is no such term as once saved, always saved. We have to be continually moving forward for Jesus Christ. And we talked about paddling upstream against the current. We found out that that paddle, listen, Rachel, is Jesus. And everybody said, amen. It's Jesus and his word as we fight to go upstream and we're continually moving forward for Jesus. If we ever stop paddling, Ben, we start going back downstream. We start to backslide. And then we're going to talk about that subject today. Let's go a little bit further. If it were not for the constant battle, we're going to find out why are we always in a battle with the devil. Listen carefully. If it were not for the constant battle against human forces and the evil powers in high places, I believe, here's what I believe, we would find ourselves complacent, never plowing forward, never trying to move forward, and even when we do, Robbie, it's with a half-hearted experience, never trying to improve our relationship with Jesus. All of these circumstances, Susan, lead to backsliding. <laughs> if we're not continually in prayer, and study and witnessing and testifying if we're not continually moving forward we're backsliding now let's talk about that subject here's what it says in first peter 4 12 get your bibles out get a pencil and pad out and write these scriptures down listen carefully first peter 4 12 here's what the bible says beloved think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice as you are a part of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed at the second coming, listen, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Every trial that I go through, I find myself on my knees. If everything's going smoothly, the bills are being met, <laughs> I feel good, wife's treating me good, come on. 
as long as everything is running smoothly, well, sometimes we find ourselves getting complacent. We take God for granted. But in the fiery trials, we find ourselves in prayer, in study, and on our knees. And Peter said we need that. If we are, again, let's say it one more time. If we're not moving forward for Jesus, we are backsliding in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen, backsliding. Why? Listen carefully. Backsliding is the result of drinking, listen, at the well of the wants and cares of this life. While at the same time, we are putting the things of God on the back burner. Listen, drinking or even sipping at the well of the world pollutes the heart and the mind. It is at this time we need to call on a designated driver. That's Jesus Christ. Can somebody give me an amen? <laughs> You've only got two wells to drink from, and the devil's well, looks it looks good. It may even taste good for a while, but after a while it gets bitter. But you have the well of life. That living water, which is Jesus Christ. So, as I start to drink, I want to go to the, Darren, I want to go to the right well. The well of Jesus Christ. Let's go a bit further here. Now, those, we're going, again, we're going to talk about backsliding today. Listen very carefully. Those that have tasted of the water of life, for Jesus is that water, and have decided that the life of a Christian is just too hard to bear, here's what you're saying. I have heard Christians over and over and over. Most of them are negative people, and they just wear me out, Doug. They talk about, oh, I'm serving Jesus, but you don't know what I had to go through this week. But listen very carefully. I want you to listen to this. Those that are struggling to live for Jesus and are in constant complaint, and they are negative, they are backsliding, listen to this. They no longer believe in a daily walk of sanctification. They do not feel the need of bathing in the blood of Christ. They willingly ignore the fact that the Bible says that the wages of sin is his death. Listen, life, this is what gets frightening here. Listen carefully. Life and death walk hand in hand 24 hours a day. <laughs> hand in hand. Life here, death here. We walk on a fine line that separates life and death we walk that border i'm going to read this to you every day eternal life here eternal death here is just a step away come on that's why we preach here it is so important that you are constantly feeding at the well of jesus christ where is the well at you're going to find that well in the bible you're going to find Jesus Christ in the Bible. You're going to find the Holy Spirit. You're going to find truth. You're going to find eternal life. But when we turn our wants and desires to the well that the world has to offer, it offers nothing but grief, strife, and eternal death. Listen to this. We sometimes, even Janus Christians, now I want you to listen. We sometimes live as if death is far from us. That it is something that's way down the road. We found out a young man passed away in his 20s this morning, right? So death may not be way down the road today. Listen, the unrepentant, Kathy, the unrepentant, the backslidden are saying, I will live my life in its fullest while I'm young. And peradventure, if I feel the need in my golden years, then I will give the crumbs of my life to God. God doesn't want your crumbs. <laughs> he doesn't need your crumbs. He needs you as a whole. Come on, somebody give me an amen on that. Listen, some of the excuses of the backslidden. I want you to listen to this. The attacks of Satan were just too strong and fierce for me. My lifetime of bad habits has overwhelmed me, so I backslid. I have been abused over and over again. So I backslid. My D Here's a good one, CJ. Listen to this one. My DNA has permeated me with hereditary traits, and they have ruled my life. I've heard that one over and over again. I was dealt with unfairly by my parents, my neighbors, and my friends, and my wife, and my children. So I backslid. What you are saying 
If you say that the world is too strong, the devil's too strong, that your DNA is too strong, that's why you're backslid, you are calling God a liar. What are you talking about, Donnie? Here's what it says in Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. Come on. Through Christ, I can overcome those hereditary traits. I can overcome the abuse that I may have suffered as a child. I can overcome the abuse of my friends and my neighbors. I can overcome those bad habits that I used to have. I can overcome Satan when he attacks me through the power of Jesus Christ. Through what? The power of the Holy Spirit. And everybody said amen. You are calling God a liar. And the only reason you're calling him a liar, Amber, listen, you are in a backslidden condition. Because I can tell you this. I can tell someone that's on fire for Jesus. <laughs> I can see them. I hear them, don't you, Doug? You know that they're on fire for Christ. That's the reason my, my friend Mike, he goes to the Church of God there in West Frankfurt. Mike and his wife, Linda, both. Those folks are on fire, Bobby Joe, for Jesus 24 hours a day. It never stops. Come on, somebody give me an amen. I went to see my son in the emergency room. He's a doctor there in here in Illinois. And my friend Mike had been to visit with Donnie in the ER a few nights before. And my son Donnie said, you know what? That guy, that friend of yours, is Jesus, Jesus, and ministry. And I said, well, praise God. That's what we need. <laughs> Come on, somebody help me. Listen very carefully. The Bible promises a text of encouragement, Blake. And it says, I can do all things through Jesus Christ. Now listen, what does that mean, Darren? It means this. In spite of my DNA profile. <laughs> That's probably the one people use the most. My DNA. In spite of the abuse dealt with me by my parents and my friends and my neighbor. In spite of Satan's attacks. Jesus said, I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. He goes on to say this. I am a warrior for Jesus Christ. I am can defeat the enemy. You know what your worst enemy is today, Amber? Self. Boy, does self get in the way. <laughs> Man, I can overcome the shunning of professed Christians even. I can overcome that. I can and will be saved through the merits, through the sacrifice, through the love, through the mercy and the grace of God and His Son, Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I can be an overcomer because I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And everybody said, Amen. There's no reason or excuse. When I stand before God on Judgment Day and I have backslidden, Ben, CJ, I can't say, well, if you had been married to the wife I was, you'd backslide too. If you had the children that I had, if you had the job that I had to put up with, you would. if you had my DNA, God, you would have backslidden as well. Those excuses won't take hold. He's going to say, look, I promised you that through my son Jesus Christ, you could be more than an overcomer. You could be a warrior for Jesus Christ. That's what I promised. Come on, somebody give me an amen on that. Somebody, listen carefully. And here's, so the title of the sermon again today, From Defeat to Victory. Even though I'm in a backsliding condition, maybe I've never accepted Jesus Christ. I can come from defeat. I've been defeated by Satan. But through Christ and His blood and the cross, I can have victory. I can actually live a total life of victory through Jesus Christ. The only reason, Jan, that we don't, come on, let's, let's fess up. We're so tied up, Doug, with our jobs, CJ. We're so tied up with music, Ben. <laughs> We're so tied up with Walmart, Bobby Joe that we start to drift from God. Let's go on a little bit further. Now, we mentioned a couple weeks ago about backsliding. So now i got a few questions for you today. How does God react to a backslider? Does He bring the hammer down on them? <laughs> now, come on. <laughs> Doug, Bobby Joe, we had a preacher one time that every time he'd say, God will bring the hammer down on you if you don't straighten up. Things like that. That's totally unacceptable. So listen very carefully what the Bible says. Listen, we mentioned a couple of things. How does God react to your backsliding? Separating from the mercy and the grace of God. Listen, willfully sinning after having been cleansed of all sin, you have turned your back on God, and I can guarantee you this, you will backslide. 
you will backslide. Here's what it says in Proverbs 26, 11. Here's what the Bible says. As <laughs> here's, how the, here's how the Bible looks at backsliding. Here's how the Bible looks at sin. Listen to this, Proverbs 26, 11. As a dog returneth to the vomit, so a fool returneth to his old life. Come on, somebody. I can tell you this. I worked in a hospital setting for 33 years. My wife Brenda has had a daycare for about 32 years. I can clean up anything. It doesn't bother me, but it, boy, when I clean up vomit, that's disgusting. There's nothing more smelly, unacceptable, slimy than sin. Come on. That's how God looks at it. It looks like I vomit. And he said, and yet the dog. Now, come on, let's be honest about a dog. <laughs> Sometimes, here we go. He will vomit outside. And he'll go back later and he'll eat it. Come on. The Bible refers to someone that has tasted of the goodness of God. That when he backslides and goes back into the life of sin, it's like going back and walking in vomit. Come on, somebody. I know that's disgusting. I want it to be disgusting. We need to look at sin as disgusting and repulsive and slimy and nasty. Come on, somebody. That's how we need to look at it. So the Bible gets real explicit about how God feels about sin and about a Christian, someone that's tasted of the peace and the love of God that goes back into the world. Now, I'll, I'll read this, what I wrote here. There is nothing more disgusting and nasty than vomit. Sin is described in Scripture, let's say it again, as vomit. The dog rids of the vomit that he has been healed of and that sickness, but later returns to the vomit and he devours it again. Not every time. I'm just talking about what the Bible says here. It. How can anyone that has been redeemed and washed and forgiven and loved and adopted into the family of God, how can we have any excuse of backsliding? Come on. Is anybody with me? If you want to be honest. The man rids himself, the Bible says, of sin. And he is healed and he is cleansed. Then he tires of the Christian walk, tires of the invitation of Christ, and the only thing that keeps him walking after Christ is the fear of eternal death. He's not serving God out of a contrite and humble heart. If you're serving God today, those are viewing in, out of fear of eternal fire, that will not get you into the kingdom, and that will not get you saved. You serve God because you are so thankful that God looked down in the midst of the vomit and picked you up and cleansed you and washed you clean. And everybody said, Amen. Now, here's what it says in 2 Peter. 2nd chapter, verses 20 and 22. Here's what the Bible says after someone that's been a Christian that has backslidden. Here's what the Bible says. For if they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and His Son, Jesus Christ, if they are again entangled within the world and overcome, the latter end of them is worse than the beginning. But it has happened unto them, according to the true pro proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And listen to this one. And the sow, the pig, the swine that was washed clean returns to the muck and the mire you ever see if you ever around hogs now when i was growing up dad you remember uh poppy and my uncle Wid? they raised hogs out on the farm and you could spray them down and wash them down and in two minutes they was watering in the mud again they go right back to it the bible refers to someone that's a christian that's been washed clean in the blood of christ and they go back into the muck and mire of this world. They refer to them as a pig, as a sow. Is everybody with me so far? Now listen to this. You said here, those that have accepted Christ and go back into the world, they become worse in their life and the way they live than they was before they accepted Christ. You know what that means? That means this, that once you've accepted Christ 
and you turn your back on him, you become spiritually deaf. <laughs> Come on. Your heart becomes hardened. And even though God is calling you back, you don't hear him. Is anybody with me so far? So God's reaction to the sinner, he hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. To those that are backslide, he hates the sin and the thoughts of going back into the world, but he still loves the backslider. Amen. No matter if you have a child, if you have two children, Doug, you got two boys there. What if one of them lived in the world, was in drugs, was into alcohol, was into pornography, uh, was into theft, and then the other was with you in church? Praise God, they're both in the church. What if one went to the devil and one went to God? Wouldn't you still love them the same? <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> we watched a program the other night. It was a true story. It was about a woman that had a son, and he murdered seven people. And they asked her, what do you think about your son? She said, I love my son, and he's not a monster. He's not that bad of a person at all. Are you with me so far? He murdered seven people, but the mother still stood by his side. God will never leave you nor forsake you. And when you stand before him on judgment day, if you have served the Lord and lived for God and been persistent and your consistent walk with Him, your lawyer will be Jesus. Come on. Wouldn't you love to hire Jesus now as your lawyer? Oh, it's too quiet in here. Listen, Peter is saying this. The knowledge of Jesus will enable the sinner to flee from the world's enticements and the world's defilements. The repentant must be continually aware of the temptations of the world has to offer. Now listen, we have to be constantly aware that the devil is trying to tempt us to leave the side of Jesus Christ and go back into the world. Are you with me? The devil makes, let me make this plain. The devil hates you. He wants to destroy you physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. He wants you to experience Hell's fire. Now, we talked about a few weeks ago, is hell's fire forever? We come to find out it's not. But the evil, those that sin, those that don't repent, those that live it for the world, those that have backslidden and never go back to Christ, we know that they're going to be consumed and gone forever. Isn't that what we talked about? Number one priority, you have to remember, Ben, the devil is after you, and whatever weakness you have, he already knows it. And that weakness will be exposed when he brings temptation to you. That's when you have to have... Now, listen. So many people say, I worry about what I'm going to say in a certain circumstance. How am I going to stand up for Jesus? You will never know what to say if you don't study the Bible. If you don't spend time in study and prayer, how can the Holy Spirit bring the words to you out of Scripture if you never put them in your head in the first place? Come on, somebody help me. That's why the importance of study. Let's go on a little bit further. Now, SDA commentary. I love to read their books. It talks about the sow. The figure is used to depict the Christian who has been washed and cleaned of all the world's pollutions. But, it says in the SDA commentary, through backsliding, he has returned to soil himself once more in the moral impurities from which he had been rescued through the gospel of Christ. So let's get to the question. How does God react to a backslider? Does he turn his back on you? Does he bring the hammer down on you? Does he destroy you? Does he hate you? Here, listen very carefully. How does God react to our defeats? How does God react to our rejection and our backsliding? What does he want us to do if we succumb to the wiles of the devil? Is there any hope, Rachel or Robbie, for the backslider? Is it over? Does God lose his patience toward us? Does he say in his heart, what was I thinking <laughs> when I created Donnie? What was on my mind? Is God tired and weary of our continual defeats and discouragements? I hope we don't get tired of my defeats. Man, <laughs> I hope we didn't get tired of my discouragements. Am I the one ever gets discouraged? Come on, let's we'll be honest today. No, God does it. That's your answer today. Listen backsliding is having lived and accepted Christ as your personal Savior and then due to some event, circumstance, bad decision, 
becoming lazy and indifferent in our studies, we cut ties with God, we turn from Him. That's what backsliding is. Listen, in most cases, one who has tasted of the love and the peace and the joy in serving Jesus will regret the decision of turning their back and becoming lazy upon God. Most people will find that the world, the grass isn't as green as what they thought it was. That the water wasn't near as sweet as what they thought. Is anybody with me? And once they get out there, they think, oh, no, I have turned my back on God. There's no way God will take me back. If you are honest and sincere, God will take you back. Anybody, amen? God will forgive you. God longs to take you back. Listen, at that time, guilt, and regret floods the soul. And their desire of the backslider you will find. Their desire is I want to that relation back with Jesus the son of God. Now here's what the Bible says. The Bible regards backsliding as a disease. Only the divine physician of the universe can heal that disease of the polluted mind and soul of the backslider. Now listen to this. This is my favorite part. If Amber, if you don't get anything else out of this sermon, I want you to listen to this. This will give you hope. Those that are viewing it, if you don't get anything else out of this sermon, I want you to listen to this. God does not. <laughs> I love the spirit of prophecy, don't you? God does not look upon the backslider with contempt. <laughs> he does not look upon the backslider with anger or disgust. And the commentary went on to say, listen, God loves the sinner. He loves the backslider. And here's what the Bible says. Here's what Spirit of Prophecy says. Here's what the SEA commentator says. And now this stunned me. It took me by surprise. God loves the backslider as much as he does his own son, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> God loves me as much as he does Jesus. Now that's too much. That's just too much. Kathy, God loves you. As much as he does the backslider. Come on, somebody. God loves you as much as he does his own son, Jesus Christ. Because we've been adopted, it says in Ephesians, the first chapter, into the family. I'm adopted. I'm a child of the king. And he loves me just as much as he does Jesus. It's just too hard to comprehend. So you know what I do? I take it by faith. I believe in what the Bible says. Everybody said, amen. Now listen to this. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If you have found those that are viewing in today, you know you're in a backsliding condition. You know that. There's hope for you. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14, God says, If my people, who are his people? That's the church. Right? If my people, which are called by my name, you know what I call myself? A Christian. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Everybody with me? Humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Turn from their evil ways. He said, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their lands. So I broke that down right here. We find here God's people, Israel. This was written in the time of Israel in Chronicles here. The chosen who were to take the message of salvation to the world. We find here that God's people were in a backslidden condition. I'm starting to see that in a lot of the churches today. They're in a backslidden condition. God's desire was to be present in the holy... The temple that David wanted to build and Solomon finished, did you know God wanted to have His presence there? Wow. He wanted to be there. Listen very carefully. But the people of that generation... In Israel, foolishly turned from God who was everything and could do everything to a God that could do nothing. God left that temple. He never forces himself on anyone or resides where he is not one. So I put this down, Rob, Jan. This includes an individual or church or denomination. It was God's purpose to be with and have his name amongst his people. But because of human failure, because of backsliding, God removed himself from their presence. But the new Jerusalem, talked about in Revelation, 
God's presence will be with us forever and ever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. So, listen to this. Let's break down that scripture in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. So, in this scripture, God is saying, humble yourself. What does that mean? Confess your sins, Blake. Repent of your backsliding. And pray and seek my face. What does that mean? Seek my will. Then turn, he said, from your wicked ways. These events, once you turn from your evil ways. Listen, these events, God says, it authorizes me to move my hand in your favor. <laughs> then he said, listen, I will heal you. I will forgive you. Listen, I will heal you spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, and your sins will be forgiven to the point as if you had never, ever sinned. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know about you all, if we want to be honest today. We may have been offended by someone. And maybe after a few years, you know, you say, I forgive them. But you know what? When their name is mentioned, you start getting hot. Come on. But God says, I forgive you. It's as if though you were perfect and never had sinned because I love you as much as I do my own son Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Wow, let's go a bit further here now. In Revelation 2, 1 through 5, listen to this. We're talking about the church of Ephesus today. That church, the Bible says, was in a backslidden condition. You say, how is that, how is that possible? Listen. The church at Ephesus had backslidden. They had backslidden within their hearts, minds, and soul. Yeah, listen. They were, listen, they were going through the motions. They were at church. They were working to save the lost. Listen very carefully. And it said, here's what Jesus said to that church. I know your works. And I know your labor. I know your patience. I know you can't bear evil. I know that you try the apostles. Listen, I know that you have borne patience. And for my name's sake, you've labored and you've never fainted. But he said, I've got something against you. You have lost your first love. <laughs> they have fallen out of love with Jesus. Too many Christians today, listen, trying to serve God and they don't love Jesus anymore. They're going through the ritual. They're going to church. <laughs> They're picking up their Bibles. They talk about Jesus. They pray, but they've actually lost that first love, just like the church of Ephesus, for Jesus Christ. Listen, here's what Jesus said to do. Remember then from whence you have fallen. Because you've fallen out of love with Jesus, those that are viewing in today, because you've fallen out of love with Jesus, here's what God says to do. Repent. Repent and do your first works. What do you mean? Go right back to the foot of the cross and kneel down and repent and confess and say, Oh God, wash me clean with the blood of Christ and fill me with thy spirit. You have to start all over again. Listen, and if you don't, listen very carefully, if you don't do that, God said, unless you repent, I will come unto thee quickly and remove the candlestick. What's the candlestick? The Holy Spirit. David said, oh God, after he had sinned, renew a right spirit within me. <laughs> he was so afraid of the sin. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Those that have go back and leave Jesus Christ and go back into the world, they're going to have regrets. And that sin they've committed, it will haunt them the rest of their life. I believe that David was haunted the rest of his life because not only did he have an adulterous affair with a man's wife, he sent that man to the front lines to be killed, and I believe it haunted David the rest of his life. That's why he said in Psalms 51, Oh God, create in me a clean heart and a new heart. Oh God, renew a right spirit within me. If you're backslidden, you need a new heart today. <laughs> you need to say, Oh God, cleanse me and fill me with a right spirit. Is anybody with me? If we want to be honest today. Let's go a bit further. Now, Here's what Colossians said. If you want to maintain that walk with Jesus Christ and not find yourself in a backslidden condition, here's what the Bible says to do in Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell within you. How? Richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms like we did this morning, in hymns like we did this morning, in spiritual songs like we did this morning, singing with grace in your hearts 
to the Lord. Now listen, here's what Jeremiah said. Here's what he said, the importance of studying the Word of God. Here's what Jeremiah said. Thy words were found, God, and I ate them. <laughs> I ate the words. And thy word to me was joy. And I rejoiced in my heart. And oh, how sweet the words were of the gospel. And oh God, I call upon you, the Lord of hosts. Jeremiah was saying, listen, the great experience, Lord, I have had with you since the day you cleansed me and saved me brings me nothing but joy. He went on to say this, I feed upon thy word. Why? I obtain nourishment and strength and guidance and joy unspeakable. Words that are sweeter than any honey or any honeycomb. Come on, somebody. Give me an amen at the end of that. Here, Jeremiah went on to say this. My time's running out, Blake. Listen, Jeremiah recognized that he had been adopted into the family of heaven and that he now bore the name, the family name of the child of the king. He was now a Christian. Here's what Paul says. Listen to him in Ephesians, the first chapter. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He blessed, went on to say this, He blessed Jeremiah, He blessed Daniel, He blessed Moses, He blessed Ezekiel, and now He is blessing His church in the last day movement before Jesus Christ comes. How is He doing that? Listen very carefully. Having predestinated us into adoption of the children of Jesus, through Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of His will. We have been adopted, the Bible says, into the family of God. We bore that name. I am a child of the King. I am redeemed. I am saved. I am a Christian. If any of these precious truths are neglected, here's where backsliding comes in. Rob, we're going to close on this. We just talked about study. We talked about singing. We talked about music, man. Oh, we talked about praising God. If any of these are neglected, these precious truths, any of them are shunned, any of them are put on the back burner, our spiritual nature will begin to die, and that old man, that old carnal nature, comes back to life, and we get the disease of sin and backsliding. Is anybody with me so far? So we're going to close on the scripture here. This will give you hope, those that are viewing in today, and you know if you've backslidden, if you've lost your first love for Jesus, if everybody that you work around, that your family, your friends are getting underneath your skin, you've probably backslidden. And there's reasons for that. You neglected the Word of God. Let's, I'm going to give you hope. I want to give you hope that God wants you back in the kingdom. Isaiah 40. Verses 28, 29, 30, and 31. And when we go off the air today, I want you to look these scriptures up. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of all things, fainteth not, neither is he weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. <laughs> you feel like you're backsliding? God will give you power to the faint that they may have might, that they may be increased in strength, that, the, listen, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as the wings of angels, of eagles. They shall run, and they shall not be weary. They shall walk, and they shall not faint. Once you accept Christ as your Savior, He washes you clean and wraps you in His righteousness. He fills you with the power of the Holy Spirit. And you feed and you eat the words of the Bible, your nourishment and your strength. You're in prayer. You're in study. You're out witnessing. You're out testifying. You're going to the hospitals. You're going to the nursing homes. You are praising God. You're singing to God. This will renew your strength. And you'll fly all above. Listen, all the trials and cares of this world will be beneath you. And your eyes will be fixed permanently upon Jesus Christ. Then you can say, Praise God for His Spirit, His love, His understanding, and His long-suffering, and His love toward us. Remember this as we close today, Bob. God loves you. I'm talking to the prostitute today. 
I'm talking to that drug addict on the other side of that camera. I'm talking to those that have been thieves, that have backslidden, those that profess to be Christian, that have somehow lost their love for Jesus. I'm talking to you today. God loves you as much as He does His own Son, Jesus Christ. And He will go to from one end of eternity to the other, listen, to bring you back to Him. And everybody said, Amen. Heavenly Father, precious Lord and Savior, it's hard to grasp the truth that in our lust and our hate and our rejection and our bitterness, even in that state, that state of life and being, you love us as much as you do your own son, Jesus. And your desire is that no one would perish, but everyone would come to repentance, that everyone would give your lives, their lives to you. And the backslider, you still love them. Father, the sinner, you still love them as well. And you want them in the kingdom, enough that you sent your own son and hung him upon a cross that we may have life through Christ. I thank you for this message today. Oh, God, it's not pointing fingers at anyone. We've all been discouraged. We've all backslidden to a certain degree. But today is the day that we kneel to the cross, in front of that cross, and say, Oh, God, I know I've backslidden. I know I failed you. I've rejected you. But you've never turned your back upon me. So, oh, God, today, in your mercy and your grace, look down upon me and fill me with thy loveliness, your character your Holy Spirit. Wash me clean today and have the faith to believe that God has accepted you just as you are. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you.